let's talk deflection circuit. And um, I fiddled around with this a bit till I actually got where I wanted. And so how it works is you've got your deflection plates in here. And what you want to do is you want to have a static adjustment, which will use two of them. You could also differentially drive them. But uh, it turns out for what I want to do, that's actually just about fine to use them like this. And these are, I'll put an S here for static. And then these two, they're dynamic. And we'll first cover the, uh, the static. And what I did to, to actually do this is I build another resistor string. Uh, it goes like this and this is a 250k. And the idea with this is this is equal in resistance. 50. 50. This is equal in resistance to the other string I built. And you could have actually thrown it all into one string, but I already had the other one made up, so I just built another one. Um, and then I've got 180 down here. 180. Okay. And this is basically connected in parallel to the main string. It goes down here like this. Um, this is connected in parallel to the diode goes out like here. And then this point here, right smack in between the 50k resistors, goes out to here and it goes to the point where grid 2 and grid 4 connect. So this is grid 2 and 4 potential which we'll call zero volts for now. <clears throat> and I actually measured the difference in between those two points when I made those resistor strings up before I um, connected this up. And it was 10 volts, so this is to about, about to ex be expected. It's less than a percent of uh, 1,200. Um, so this is it's perfectly fine. And that gives us, if we say this is zero volts, that gives us about 80 volts and minus 80 volts, which is just the thing we need to um, deflect the electron beam, because this is how it works. <clears throat> you have to have um, a potential that's negative and a potential that's positive from your grid 2 and grid 4, at least for this tube, I think, uh, in general. That's probably how it works. So, for our static adjustment, we'll just put two pots. And there's, there's almost no current flowing in, so you can make those very large. I made them one meg. And then you have that going here. And you've got another one, like this, just in parallel with that. And this goes out to that one. Which means now, you can actually shove your beam around. Up, down, left, right. Um, and how I did this on the actual oscilloscope is this is just it's at a prototype stage at the moment so if you look down here you're nestled in between all those wires you can actually see I've got my second resistor string right here this is a 250 50 50 250 and 180 then I've got those two pots here those and you can actually control the electron beam. Uh, you can scroll it across the screen and it works quite well. And I'll put some video um, of this here. Here I'll put it.
And what you want to do next is you want to have some dynamic deflection, which is controlled by the input signal. So this allows you to put it on your screen where you want it to be, and then you need some drive for these two. Um, one, the horizontal one, should just scroll across the screen like this. You need a sawtooth. Um, and then the other one, that's where your signal goes in your oscilloscope. So what I did, which I prototyped up here, and this seems to work fairly well, is I took a twin triode, which I'll draw here rather largely because we only have to draw one of them. That's a little bit too large, but anyway, I've got two anodes, I've got two grids, and I've got your cathode here, here, and you've got your filament here. And filament, uh, I'll, I'll not draw the circuit for this because I haven't made it up yet, but at the moment it's running from a lab power supply. You've got two resistors. The base resistor here, and this just connects to this point down here. And then we've got our anode resistor here. This actually connects to here, and this goes all around up to here. And now we can actually, with this grid, control the deflection, which is great. Now we have the same arrangement, just the same arrangement here, like this. No, I mean, like a this, if this connecting up to here, and then this having a resistor here, and the signals going in here. So I built a prototype of this. And this, now I just get the whole thing over here on this breadboard um, with an ECC83 this being an ECC83 and this being 1 meg and this being 10k and that works fine um, actually it could use on the horizontal thing, it could use a little more, uh, a little more amplification. So um, I'm probably going to uh, adjust these values a little bit. Uh, that seems to work just about fine. Now I will, I just have to put all of this in here, um, or actually make a second chassis. I'm not sure about that yet. And then the next thing we'll talk about is the sweep circuit. Um, so we've got to somehow generate a sawtooth wave. And in the olden days they actually used firetrons for this, but I don't have any nice firetrons. I think I have a couple, but they're all worn out. And, um, yeah. I don't know if I actually want to use a firetron. I thought about using a Pearson Anderson, Pierce Anders. Well, neon bulb oscillator. Um, um, but yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Mm, I have to think about that. Yeah. Oh, the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is um, I actually swapped the tube. This is a different tube. Um, this is a. I got another one of these um, very cheaply locally. Um, and the nice thing about this is, this was very cheap, and it was, uh, it's, but it is, um, and that's why it was cheap. It's uh, pretty worn out. Um, it has a lot of hours on it. You can actually, if you look inside the tube uh, back there, uh, you can see that the, the deflection plates are all discolored. And, but it still works 
fairly good. It's still very bright. Um, it's a little fuzzy. It's not the dot is not as sharp as on the other two. But the nice thing about this is I can play around this all day long. And if I break it, then yeah, I've got another tube. And um, once everything is developed and works, then I'll just swap in a new tube with um, no risk for well destroying the whole project because I destroyed a tube. Um, so that's great. So yeah, next thing, sweep circuit. I'm putting this all together. Then eventually thinking about the heaters and the case. And then we're almost done with this. Which is nice. This is just a, some handheld video. Um, these are the two positional controls that I'm eventually going to mount on the, on the case. Um, and then over here I've got my twin triode set up with and I had a PCC85 because this was one of the few um, serious string double triads that I actually had and yeah I mounted it to the power supply board and it doesn't seem to mind it much um, I can actually fit everything on one chassis that would be great but I don't think that will work so there's one last thing I want to do in this video the um, the CRT needs 6.3 volts at about 470 milliamps. Um, and while the rest uh, of the circuit will be designed in 300 milliamps serious string tubes, um, this doesn't fly well with that. I mean, you could what you could do is uh, you could have your filament like this, and then put a resistor across every single one of those that are not 470 that passes 170 milliamps but that's not a good solution in, in my opinion so um, I'll begrudgingly admit that we have to um, put another transformer there and just have ourselves smallish filament supply it's, this should be about 10 volts. And then I have these rather nice new old stock selenium rectifiers. They're good for 20 volts, 550 milliamps, so they should do just fine. Um, they're a little modern for my taste and for this build, but um, well, in principle, things like that wear around at the time. That Those tubes that I put in there wear around, so... Uh, no issues there. I'll just draw a lazy bridge rectifier. And then we'll go out to a capacitor. And this just connects all to ground. And then I'll have a resistor here. Or a couple of resistors. Um, that will limit the current to this like this and this is the filament this is the transformer um, rectifier capacitor and resistor setup on uh, just a piece of prototyping board mounted to the chassis 